public comment during your meetings. However, as the public to limit the time to issues of the tonight's purview. Today's agenda includes a uh, request for determination of applicability to determine the removal of water chestnut is subject to the Wetlands Act. Um, is that uh, Holbridge Pond, Fulton Gerald Lake, the Oxco, et cetera, a uh, number of places. Uh, uh, next day, request for determination of applicability to determine if installation of the new ground pool with patio or removal uh, and removal of the above ground pool is subject to the Wetlands Act, is on Woodland Drive. Uh, then a notice of intent for bridge replacement and boardwalk repair uh, uh, by the Broadway Coalition of Fulton Lake. And then notice of intent for residential subdivision construction, including roadway stormwater system and related work on uh, this up at the uh, Old State Hospital grounds for crossing. Um, first item is that we are being recorded. Yes. Okay, so it's working this week. Um, and then see if there are any general public comments uh, aside from specific places. Uh, if not, did we have minutes this week? We did not. No. We got we had submitted permits. So no minutes to be approved. So the first item, uh, request for determination of ability to determine if removal of water chestnut is subject to the Wetlands Act or the Wetlands Ordinance. Uh, applicant uh, Cynthia, Cynthia Bettner, um, Fish and Wildlife Service. Hi. Thank you. Hi. So um, did everybody get a color copy of the, the photo page in your? Anybody else like one? Okay. Yeah, sure. So, um, we've been, like the refuge and many uh, organizations, conservation partners have been removing water chestnut from places in the Connecticut River watershed where it's found, trying to keep this invasive plant from spreading. It can uh, destroy wildlife habitat and become so thick, as you can see in the picture, um, upper right-hand picture. This is uh, Holyoke, Log Pine Cove in Holyoke, right above the, the dam, Route 202 um, bridge. And uh, so you can see that it, recreation would be pretty much impeded, and oxygen depletion is a problem as well. So we've been trying to keep this plant under check by pulling it by hand in areas where it's a lot more manageable. This site, we actually are working with partners to do mechanical harvesting and herbicide treatment. So we don't want other sites to get that bad where it takes many, I think we probably put over $100,000 into Log Pine Cove, at least mm -hmm. between all of our partners and grants and all that. So that's what we're trying to prevent from happening. So um, we've been doing it for quite some time in Northampton and had visited you many, many years ago, um, so many years ago that Sarah couldn't even find it in the records. <laughs> but DEP has asked us to revisit, revisit our RDAs and get those up to date. So um, we've been working as well as Mass Audubon in the Oxbow area, our refuge, and Broadbrook Coalition has been working in Fitzgerald Lake, and we've been doing a pretty good job, I must say. Um, it's really at a manageable level in each of the sites. So you might have noticed the graph in, in, your, uh, in our application that shows Arcadia, where it's been going on the longest and they actually do it twice a year. And that one's down to, I think they just got like 25 pounds last year after taking loads and loads and loads out the first few years. So. Mm -hmm. The, is that Holdridge? Is that the name of the Yeah, person? right. Yep. So what we're shooting for is to try to find more people to get involved with this so that we can also, at the sites we go to, go at least twice a year. Because I think that's what it takes to really nab the ones that were in hiding the first time around. So, um, so that's another thing I'd like to ask you tonight. If you have any ideas on groups, organizations, businesses, churches, Boy Scout groups, anything that you think might be local that might be interested in helping out. So, so that's my request. Any questions from the commissioners? Interesting. Right. It's good to see you. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah, right. Okay, I remember the first time <laughs> that's they did it in uh, the Oxbow. There's a lot, yeah. a lot of stuff. 
and then the overall sense is one of gratitude that you made us. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Where are the disposal sites? I know they're not near the water, but right. so in some cases there's a lot of water. Yeah, just, I'm just curious. Yeah. Where do you find them to tell what, what we do, but, um, where we've taken the most out ourselves, and Mass Audubon has been, been doing that this past, the past couple of years, um, is the kind of the bay that's across from the boat ramp off Route 5. So uh -huh. you're launching, and then there's a little peninsula, and on the other side of that, that's where we've taken out the most water chestnut. And what we do with that is we haul it back to our refuge in Hadley, where it's just up on nice dry ground, and it's amazing. I mean, we have pile about the size of this table in height and size and by the by a few months after we're done it's just reduced down because it's all air and water so it's pretty amazing but we do in some cases where they're just a little bit we just haul it up <coughs> on site but away from the water so it won't tumble back down in so there's a standard procedure that you're using to remove right we're um we're following the guidelines that DCR, um, Department of Conservation and Recreation, put forth, and that was all approved by DEP. And um, so, well, when you're looking for volunteers, you're not looking for them to go out on their own, or does it need to be supervised? Well, we can take people who they can, if they're trained, they can go out on their own. Um, so as long as we feel comfortable that they know safety um, protocol and how to do it and how to identify the plant, you know, if, if this passes tonight and it's in the water bodies that we know it is. <coughs> the other thing we would, we would be grateful for is when people are just out paddling, you know, in your boats or canoes or kayaks, just to be on the lookout for it and reporting it back if you see it. So that would be in places where you know, we don't even know it exists because it's probably out there. Um, and the more the more it drops seeds, the bigger these things will get. So we're trying to catch things really early so that we don't have huge infestations. I'm just wondering about people inadvertently spreading it if they don't follow the correct procedure. Yeah, it could be possible if it's already produced seeds. Um, and they don't take it far enough away and there might be a flood, you know, just high water, it could get washed back down into the When into did the, the seeds form? Pardon? When did the seeds form? They start in, it's blooming in July and by early August it started to produce seeds. Usually they, they don't start falling off and maturing until mid to late August. Okay. So that's when we really have to be careful on how we're dealing with it. And usually when seeds just start falling, <coughs> we just stop. But after visiting some sites very late in the season that were newly reported to us in September, we could see that these seeds, even though some fall off, the new ones just keep going. And so until it frosts and the plants uh, just sort of frost over and drop into the water and sink. Um, it can just start, continue to pump out new seeds. So we've actually extended our season, even though seeds are dropping. I have been unaware that they can germinate over 12 years. That's been the real challenge. And it's unpredictable as to what year it's going to choose to germinate. So, you know, we can get it down, down, down. Do all the seeds from one plant germinate the same year, or are they just No, sort of no, not seeds? necessarily. Yeah, so we can we can get it down so it's down to almost nothing, and think we've got it licked, and then come back and it must be a good year because there's a new patch of it. So yeah, so it's it's an ongoing thing. It will probably be something we'll have to keep going back to, always. <laughs> Any other questions? Any comments from the public? I think it's a great idea. <laughs> Thank you. Motion to close? Yeah, motion to close. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Um, so, uh, Sarah's recommendation is pretty clear that this is being conducted by boats and is essentially a lady servants and only outside open improvement. So, uh, Sarah's recommendation is that we issue a negative determination. Um, 
Jim Cox too. Yes, we can hear you so it's here in the circle not to get a motivation. Side comment would be that it's also a very good thing. And we're glad to have somebody do um, without only us uh, thinking about this. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Most so good. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you. Any ideas on groups? Uh, who to bring in? Yeah, that might be interested in helping. I've got my pad ready. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have a youth conservation corps, so they're they're in. Um, we usually bring them out during the month of July. We don't have anybody in June and August. What age? They're in their late high school year, so well, I guess high school, 14 through 18, usually 15, 16. Yeah, and then they're led by college age. And we have volunteers too. We have a volunteer core that we just keep on a mailing list and every time we have an event on a Saturday or a Sunday or even during the week we think that there might be people who aren't working and would like to join us. We just mail everybody out with a schedule and they can sign up as individuals. So it doesn't have to be a group. How are, you, how are you running the event? Is there a number of days that you're expecting or a number of people for um, I think that you have to go for? Um, we like to, when, it, when it's us, we like to fill all of our boats. So we have, we have six on a rack and we can even bring a couple extra on top of the truck. So if we can fill them, then we can make sure that everything's covered. So even if there's not, as much out there on a given year, we feel like it's been well inspected. So, so, so that's what we're shooting. Hold how many people? Two. Two. So mm -hmm. it doesn't equal the screen. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yep. And Mass Audubon already has a couple dates. I should have brought them with me tonight, but they they have already chosen dates, and I, I don't have them in my head, so I could make that available. And if if you have a place that you think people would notice it, that it could be posted here or elsewhere. Having kids that are now 25 to 40, I don't to hang out with young people that are teachers. <laughs> it's not just or, young people. No, no, I understand. <laughs> um, but it, you know, I realize that I draw a blank and I think about, oh, you know, 15 years ago I would have said, oh, well, I can call. And, you know, yeah. And I don't know who those people are. Yeah. Okay, well, if yeah, you, you send us the dates, yeah, I can um, look in the environmental science department at Westfield and oh, great. blast out all the students that are there. Super. There's about another list as well. Yeah. So this is Westfield State? Yeah. yeah. Bob Thompson brought yeah. canoes out to one of our sites that we were doing in cooperation with. Um, in Westfield? Yeah. Yeah, with Karen. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So we'll be looking, looking to him for that again. So yeah, that was really helpful. Actually, it wasn't helpful last year because the Boy Scouts that had signed up to come didn't come. But this year, we're going to either get commitments or look elsewhere. Well, thank you. I don't want to keep you too long here. And I want to thank folks in the front row here because they have all been helping extensively at Broadbrook and Bachelor Brook. So, yeah, go team. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Uh, next item is a request for determination of adoptability to determine the installation of an in-ground pool with patio, the removal of an above-ground pool, the subject of the Weapons Act and the Weapons Ordinance. Uh, this uh, address <coughs> the applicant's 34 Woodman Drive, the applicant is uh, uh, Barrios. Yes, uh, hello everyone. Hi. Um, my name is George Barrios, and this is my wife, Damaris. And uh, on up, we, uh, we reside at 34 Woodland Drive. We've been living there for about nine years now. We do have a, an above ground pool there. Um, we've had it now for about five years. And um, so we're looking to install a, an in ground pool, 18 by 36. Uh, with the help of Mr. O'Donnell from Florence Pool. Tom O'Donnell from Florence Pool. So, 
pictures and a write up. You know what size the patio would be around the pool? That's the area. The fence is going to be right up against the patio. Um, well, on the left side, as you're standing from the deck, you know, behind the house, yeah. um, we're, we're thinking about uh, like eight to ten feet of patio mm -hmm. on that side, which would be the shallow end, and then on the uh, deep end, uh, about six to eight feet, and on the sides, about three to four. Other questions from commissioners? site visit so I don't know how, how steeply the hill the slope you know goes down at the end of the lawn there. It's, like it's, it's hard to tell from just one picture. I didn't measure but uh, there are other uh, several pools in the neighborhood um, so there's quite a few uh, in-ground pools in the neighborhood. What size is the one that's there? 27. 27 foot well, round pool. Roughly the same width for the patio. Yeah, yeah it's a fairly large yeah. round pool. Um, what's the pool sitting on right now? It's just dirt? Kind it's just, yes, yeah, sand. Dirt, yeah. sand yeah. It's hard to measure out because the pool is kind of in the way for us <laughs> to like, actually measure things properly. Yeah. Yeah, but you'll be taking the pool down. Yes. Looks like gravel now. It's a gravel thing. That's just kind of rock around it. Yeah, it's, it's right around the edge. It's just oh, stone, right. stone along the edge. Yeah. And then sand on the end. Correct. Right. It looks like it's great in the when it's on a flat area and then it gently slopes over and gently goes down the mm -hmm. path here. Okay. Looks like once it gets past your shed back there, it's, it's a steeper. Yes, it's yes. Uh, like he describes, kind of a gentle slope, and it flattens out. And the shed is pretty much at the tree line. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Other questions from commissioners? Questions or comments from the public? Is there anything uh, uh, No, just the things in the staff report. I did have a question. This so there be some machinery coming in to dig out. Yeah, so this is going to require some excavation. Yeah, and the accessibility um, is pretty, from Woodland, it looks like, I haven't been to the site either, but it looks like it's pretty accessible. Oh, yeah. So there is. Uh, woodland is like a. Uh, you don't have to go around the structure to get to it. I'm thinking of the machinery shouldn't No, from the garage. So there, there's, 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 uh, there's plenty of room to navigate the machinery uh, on the right side of the garage, which is where I'm going to have the machinery go because I don't want to go from the left because that's where I have my septic system. So it'll, it'll be able to pretty much go around on the right side. Correct. Yeah, you don't want to run right <laughs> um, we could probably have some kind of siltation barrier to put up for the wood one because they're made by some kind of right. yeah. Yeah. yeah and then yeah obviously any machine you're going to deal with far far away from the well so in case they have some soil materials stacked up to, to get a summer rain or something yeah, that stuff going in. Um, Sarah, you made a comment about not draining the old pool towards the wetlands. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's any. Is it a 
chlorine issue because yes. I don't think the water's there's no it, the it's season. chemical issues oh yeah okay. that's right they were closing chemicals in Or onto the lawn, but just not directly yeah. into the lawn. Just to give it some chance to absorb it to the ground. Motion close. Second. 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 All in favor of that? Aye. So, um, Sarah's recommendation that. Uh, Yes, this is within the area subject to protection, uh, but is exempt because it's in an already degraded area and will not result in um, any <coughs> alteration. Um, and I will accept uh, or I will make a motion to accept this staff recommendation. Including, including the required uh, road control, extent of the edge of the tree line. Right. Second. Second. Further discussion? Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So good. Thank you. And the, there's no appeal period, so you can get started anytime you want to. So okay. we have to go and get like another permit with a regular permit? Uh, if you if you needed a building permit, then you'll still have to do one of those. But this is this is all you need from the conservation commission. So the only uh, conditions would be there be a demarcation and a erosion control barrier ten feet. And a silt fence. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, the drain the water either through your uh, plumbing system or out away from the wetland. Okay. Uh, and then there's a third. No tree, 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 yeah. tree. No tree. And also, from the staff recommendations, that the plan before you build the actual patio plan should be submitted to the staff. Not necessarily before, but just afterwards, just oh, for afterwards. our just for our reference. Just so we have the okay. right. we have yeah. the right. I you'll get this. Okay. Great. All right. Thank Good. you. Thank you very much. For bridge replacement and boardwalk repair and extension at uh, Broadbrook Fitzgerald Lake. Gentlemen, this time, thank you, Katsu. So, you should be getting an uh, additional narrative on impacts of uh, this work on the boardwalk. Uh, this is in response to uh, the regional DEP uh, wetland specialist uh, questions. And, comments. So my name is Dick O'Brien. I work at Conservation Works. We've been uh, engaged by the city to do the work uh, uh, here. Uh, we've designed the uh, new bridge. Uh, we won't be building it. We'll be supervising a student conservation association crew that will come in for a 10-day stint to actually put the bridge in sight. Uh, we will be supervising that work. Um, we will also be supervising the uh, subcontractor who does the repair work on the boardwalk and uh, builds the new 100-foot extension out into the lake and the platform there. Um, this narrative talks about uh, Mark's concerns or comments about impacts in the uh, 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 vegetated uh, wetlands uh, next to the existing boardwalk. Um, and uh, given that the intent here is to use as much of the existing boardwalk as possible and to keep it in the exact same location, um, the impact <coughs> will be relatively minor. Um, there will be holes dug for the new 4x4 four four posts that soil will be put up on um, uh, plywood sheets on top of the existing boardwalk. Uh, some of that soil will be used to fill in the holes around the uh, four by four posts. 
otherwise that uh, excess soil will be taken out of the uh, wetland area or up to the solid ground and scattered uh, in the woods in that area. Um, the, the impacts uh, in some ways will be positive. We'll be removing the uh, six by six uh, pressure treated sleepers that are there now that are sitting on the ground. So that impact will be removed. Um, we will also be raising the existing boardwalk about a foot. So there'll be a little more light getting in under the boardwalk. Um, this is not the ideal situation that Mark would like to see, but in order for us to daylight that stream and the underneath of the existing boardwalk, we'd have to raise it high enough that would require railings along the side. What's the, the, the requirement? Know that if, at a foot you don't trigger it. But no, uh, 30 inches. 30 inches. Okay. Yeah. Um, which would, I mean, there's no, uh, technically, there's no standard height for uh, uh, daylight. No, no, I understand that. So you put but the safety from the building code, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, if we go up that high, then we're adding railings to it where dramatically increasing the cost and yeah. we are changing the character of the experience there. Now you'd be walking mm -hmm. down between two 42 inch high or if you want it to uh, uh, have bikes uh, 56 inches high. Um, it's a very different experience than what you have now. Um, so I mean the, the impact, most of the work that we're going to do or the subcontractor will do on the existing boardwalk can actually be done from the boardwalk. The biggest impact will be the winching or the jacking of the boardwalk up. And what we plan to do there is use two foot by two foot uh, uh, compression pads there. The jacks or the winches, or the, the posts for the winches will be setting on those. So that will have very little impact on the soil or on the vegetation. <laughs> there will be some uh, temporary compaction of that, but uh, as the year goes on, that vegetation will recover from that. And certainly by next year, uh, you won't see any impact to that. Hundred foot extension. How are you going to do that by boat? Or? We're going to build that as we go with helical piers, and so um, as we go out, we will have a frame in a uh, platform oh, okay. uh, to each set of helical piers in the sill. Yeah. Then build the next one out, and the next one, and the next one. So there'll be ten frames that are ready to go and as we install those uh, two sets of piers, we attach that frame, deck it, and the next unit is put up. The power head for that is a um, the torque uh, uh, head that you use to drive the piers yeah. is a, a sort of small uh, portable power unit that is basically carried out. We do one move it 10 feet to the next one. And uh, the, the, we had talked at one of the earlier site visits about having a floating platform at the end. Is that no longer part of the plan? Um, because the, the, this was given the variation uh, that the beavers are so kind to help with this, uh, that uh, would people be able to have reliable access, especially handicapped people and so forth, if they're getting out of boats, if there was uh, and the thought was at one of our site visits it was well if this were a floating <coughs> platform if this was terminated in a floating platform then you could have consistent um, well, it is a possibility the problem with a floating platform <coughs> is generally you have to take those out, out of the water in the winter months so someone has to be willing to do that uh, and I'll look to you well, guys this, this yeah I think um, I think that the problem with the uh, variable lake level has been solved. It was caused by blockage of the dam drain by beavers. Um, 
we did something last summer. Go into details if you wish. Yeah, well, I, I, I remember. We, <laughs> but uh, it seems to have worked quite well. We haven't seen any variation in lake level from the beginning of August till now. Mm -hmm. uh, the beavers apparently have not been able to get into the drain structure, and we expect that that will be the case in the future. So we're not expecting the need variations in lake level. And for that reason, we're, we're planning on having a fixed, yeah, fixed, fixed uh, platform. Yeah. Other questions from commissions? No, it'd be kind of nice to walk down here without getting wet. Without getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> How much is it? Uh, it is usable. Uh, it, I remember seeing it. The, a lot of it was submerged long enough and consistently enough that it didn't rot. Yeah. Uh, the parts that were submerged. I, I think most of it is still, still usable. Uh, usable. Um, we'll see. It's been there for close to 20 years now. Mm -hmm. Um, even fresh treated wood gets dry and brittle. And as we jack it up, we're going to see whether the joints split. Uh -huh. And if they do, we, we may have to step back and uh, uh, look at that. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I've done this kind of work before, um, maybe not on quite as old a structure, and it's been fine. And I'm hoping for the same results here. I think if we're, we're only lifting it up a foot, if we do that carefully, we shouldn't have an issue. Uh, but there is a little contingency uh, factor in there, and we'll see how that goes. So we're, we're hoping that uh, we'll save, you know, 95% of it. But um, we are, we do have to remove a couple of deck boards where these new vents are going to be installed in those deck boards that we remove um, because they were nailed in we're going to have to pry them up they could split and, and so we'll have to replace those well how long do you think it will take the project to complete? it, it shouldn't take that long I, um, i'm i'm hoping the 10 day stint uh, the SCA crew can uh, build the ramps and the, put the new bridge. It's a prefab fiberglass bridge that can go in. Um, so within 10 days, we can remove the old one and put the new one in place. Uh, I think it'll be a good week to 10 days to, to repair the existing boardwalk and probably a week and a half to two weeks or the new boardwalk. Some of that work can be done concurrently because the subcontractor can be putting in, say, the new dock or uh, fixing the old uh, boardwalk at the same time as the SCA crew is working. Yeah. So I, I'm hoping a month and all of the work will be done and cleaned up and we'll be out of there. And the bridge, uh, are you going to be able to put it in place piece by piece or you know, bring it in pre-assembled? Would be nice to bring it in pre-assembled, but I think we're looking at, I have to talk with Wayne Fiden and see uh, what he's instructed from the company that is uh, going to supply the bridge. Um, they, it's able to be put together with ordinary hand tools. Mm -hmm. Think of it as a, a sort of full-size erector set. Yep. Uh, and uh, it's not that complex uh, a deal. So with some uh, socket sets and and uh, some good weather, it should go together pretty quick. Uh, other than the bridge and the uh, hill piles, everything else is wood. Yep. Mm -hmm. Are you also going to use the diamond supports? Or oh, diamond piers, yeah. On the approaches to the new bridge and at the abutments for the new bridge, 
we're using DP50s and DP75s. The Diamond Pier, um, I don't know, you just use your board here. Yeah. It's much easier to draw it than to try and explain it. So the Diamond Pier is a concrete structure um, about, figure this to be about a foot uh -huh. and maybe uh, six to eight inches depending on whether it's a DP75 or a DP50. And then it has these 50 inch uh, pipe that are driven down into the ground at uh, cross angles, two here and two front to back. And it's set in the ground at this level. And then there is a, a, a Simpson post base that you attach a wooden sill to. And it can be a six by eight, a, a four by four, whatever you uh, nail in here and then your bridge can yeah. go across here and those structures have been uh, remarkably stable uh, and the good thing about that if, and I'm sure you're all familiar with the current bridge and the sonar tube supports mm -hmm. how they've been lifted and shifted and so that, that bridge became unsafe. Um, these have been tested for the last 15, 20 years in Minnesota uh, and found to be stable in that environment. So the free thought doesn't disturb. Well, when you think that's gonna be a real issue, you can put longer pins in. So we could go with 63 or 84 inch pins. But I, I'm thinking in this situation, we're fine. Uh, and the good thing about this is once you set it, it takes you, you know, five minutes to dig. So you're digging a little six inch hole here, a foot round, six inches deep. You set that uh, concrete uh, piece in, weighs about 50 pounds, uh, level it across the top, set the pins, and you're ready to build. You don't have to wait for the concrete to cure, it's already done that. We used those to uh, replace two of the posts at the bird blind out at the Fitzgerald uh -huh. Lake recently. So if you want to take a look, they're, they're in place. And we use those uh, on several structures for viewing platforms, for stair bases, for other boardwalks, and, and they've been very uh, stable and very quick. Curiosity question, what would you recommend the this as opposed to the hill pool up here? You can't set these in open water. Uh -huh. So yeah. the hill pool here, yeah, you can set that in moist ground or dry ground with no problem, but in open water you've got to um, drain the area. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not, they're not recommended for open water situations. That's, that's the real good uh, thing about helical piers. Right they can be set in open water to just fine. Any other questions? Is there any comments beyond your Lengthy description in here? No, I'm basically just that it, it, it will be an overall improvement to an existing structure. Um, I think we've all been out there and dropped yeah. through various iterations of this over the last couple of years. So, so, uh, in some ways, it seems like it's been a long time in the works. And uh, on the other hand, when you look at how rapid, how Slowly, things often happen. This actually doesn't seem so bad. <laughs>
part of that was just the uh, uh, length of the uh, grant process. Raising money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, could. yeah, both the grants take a while. Took a while. Motion close. July 18th uh -huh. is yeah. the day that the SCA crew will appear. Okay. But will um, there will be activity at the site before that because yeah. we're going to um, have to get materials in the bridge on site, get everything ready for when that crew comes. So probably at least two weeks before that uh, work will begin. Great. Terrific. Um, Thank you very much. I haven't been out there since last year, but as the bridge stopped its uh, tilt toward gravity? Yeah, we did a, uh, actually two years ago, we did a repair uh, uh, <coughs> of one of the corners that seems to have held up pretty well. Right, no, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, so that does. Right now it's, it looks good. <laughs> and, and all of those sonitudes will be removed from the stream bed and the new bridge will completely span the width of the stream so you won't have any structures in the stream at all which will be a big plus great, great. thanks you have to call it rebob instead of just bob <laughs> bridge over broke before <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got it there man. thank you very much good enough thank you so, excuse me, I just had a question about procedure. You'll issue an order of conditions? Yes. Um, what, within the next couple of weeks or something? So, probably tomorrow. Probably oh, tomorrow. Yeah. As soon as they can get to Because we should probably order the bridge as soon as we can now. Oh, so, um, things are in progress. I think, I think the bridge has it been ordered. It's been ordered, actually? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think I Wayne think told me he was going to let it contract out two weeks ago, so. Okay. Right. Bob, are you a bulldozer? I see you wouldn't build a logo on your shoe. <laughs> I've spent a, a couple of periods at, uh, at up at Wooden Boat. Oh, really? Yeah, one Thank doing you. some sailing and one doing uh, small boat building. Uh -huh. That was fun. Have you been there? Um, no, but I'm building a 17 foot door right now. Oh, great. Good. Yeah. See <laughs> so, yeah. Next item. Is, uh, notice of intent for residential subdivision construction, including roadway, stormwater system, utilities, and related work 
applicant declared construction in this location at Ford Crossing and York State Hospital grounds. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm just going to ask What's that? Uh, I was just going to hold it up. Um, so this is a uh, 21 unit um, housing development within the Village Hill we District. What's that? Have your names. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm John Allard um, from Fussman Hill. I'm a landscape architect. I'm Lawrence Lloyd from Ken P. Corey and Sons Construction Company. We're the applicant. And I'm Eric Bernard, a civil engineer at Fussman Hill. Sorry about that. Um, so, we, a little bit of a backstory. We had originally gone to um, planning with a preliminary uh, plan of this um, housing. Um, uh, project or design and we got the thumbs up um, and said you know you're, you're welcome to go along with, and with the, the, the definitive plan um, with a, a couple of conditions whether it be uh, just changing out the concrete curbing for a granite curbing um, so we went ahead and asked our surveyor to get more um, to better topography mm -hmm. and while he was out there um, he picked up some wetland flags. So we had a meeting with, with Sarah and Carolyn from the planning office. Um, what are kind of opportunities or what, what we could do? Um, now, I don't know if you can really see from this area, area but the wetlands flags were, were picked up on this little finger along uh, an existing path. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can kind of see it. Um, and it so happened that I loaded the, the new survey into the file and it popped up and we had retaining walls within the 50 foot buffer. We had grading within the wetlands um, and we had the building within the 50 foot buffer. So um, there used to be a couple of units over here and here um, and those were, and that's where the problem area was. Mm -hmm. um, so our um, solution to this problem was to create a little bit of a, a, a spur road off of the, the, the one-way cul-de-sac um, and move these units this way. Um, and I should have mentioned earlier that there was a detention basin as well. Um, uh, not within the 50-foot buffer, but the grading came in. And the, we moved the detention basin off over there. Um, so that got us out of the riverfront. Um, it also uh, got us within the regulations of um, the 20% disturbance within the 50 to 100 foot buffer or at about 19%. Um, and uh, I guess I can uh, point out some uh, kind of ecologically friendly areas we have on um, uh, a, a rain garden um, that's going to be filled with uh, uh, plants. Uh, we have infiltration, underground infiltration, uh, that's going to take a bunch of the water from the site. Um, and at each unit, we'll have a, uh, some in-ground uh, infiltration at each, uh, at each building. I thought it was worth noting too that you use existing conditions on the site now as the basis for your stormwater calculations and not from when the state hospital existed, which isn't what other developers have done in the same situation. Yeah, yeah, we elected not to take, thank you, sorry, to elected not to take credit for the existing impervious area that was part of the state school that was uh, there 15 uh, years ago. So these the foundations of the existing conditions now is this where the old garage was? In it was the piggery barn and then a mechanic garage. There mechanic were two structures garage. down here. There was one over here that was, I think that's the mechanic's garage we were talking about, and then the other one that was more centralized, I think, was the pig barn. Yeah, and, and we will be, uh, there's existing some wall foundations out there, and we'll be reusing those in some of the, the new uh, retaining walls and yeah. site signage as well. Yeah, there's a couple of stone retaining walls down, sort of, right as you head behind the units that are on um, for, for crossing. So 
And then we did have a little bit of grading. Some of the grading that's in that 50 to 100 foot zone, <coughs> there's an existing trail that heads down to the river there that yeah. uh, the planning office would like us to preserve. So we're sort of preserving that. And so we did a little bit of grading to maintain that uh, path down that direction. Well, this is well, close to 40 years ago, we used to work up there. Uh, the, it, it's a humbling reminder of how quickly nature takes over, that it's very hard, even having worked there, to now get oriented about remembering where things were walking around. Yeah. Well, Steve are those graves that are um, towards the entrance from the units in Washington and the town. So they're generally three to one or shallower. Okay. So, and in this area, you know, sort of it comes up as a finger, so a lot of this heads down to it with more buffer and sort of heads in that direction. Yep. I'm not positive about what the evolution of this um, wetland was. There's an old water line that comes through that path. We don't know if that path sort of perched the water there because there is a wetland off property right here. I don't know if you guys saw on the map, and that is a bordering vegetative wetland that is with an unnamed, uh, I don't think it's a perennial stream that heads down to the Mill River. And so we are out of the 200 foot now, we weren't originally. But um, I, I have a feeling years ago, before this was all built, it probably shed it off in that direction. So I think the road probably created a little bit, or the trail and water probably created a little bit. And the uh, soils under your underground potential? Yeah, so we actually did a lot. As you, you guys, I'm not sure how many filings that have been on this property, but the mass development in the village that we've been trying to do different developments uh, here. I think the last one was a Montessori school that they were trying to place here. So there are a lot of borings done that we had been submitted. And then I actually did test pits, and I actually take a little bit of responsibility because I did it myself, and I walked through all the high trees, and I didn't catch these flags when I was walking down here. I didn't even, uh, you know, we took test pits sort of in the area where the detention basin was, and then a couple up above and it generally gets as you get further down it gets tighter yeah. and the, almost this is sort of urbanized sandy fill I don't know if they did it when they built the state school um, they must have done some leveling up there um, but uh, you know as you get back the soils get a little tighter and that's why this is a detention basin it's not an infiltration basin and that's why we did all the infiltration up above where we had you know at least four feet on from the bottom of the yeah. infiltration uh, down to the bottom. And there's no uh, <coughs> toxic materials to worry about under the old garage? Uh, the, uh, an old ASTM phase one or a 21 e study was done. I don't know if there's any plans to upgrade it, but mass development has provided that yeah, information right. to you folks, and there's, there's nothing that we know about. No, no further plans on that. about the individual underground Sure. So, so there's sort of three and a half or four systems here. So as you come down the road, um, this is actually going to be a nice, I've been joking with Wayne Fiden that uh, we, this is a combination, because it's the village area and it's so dense, you have to put a lot of effort into like the grading of the houses and the curbing and the stepping because it also goes downhill. But then we also use country drainage. And people usually think country drainage of a swale and you got plenty of buffer and you got plenty of grass area where you have to put a little bit more detail and with detail comes a little more money um, associated with, so I call it British country drainage just to make it fancier. But um, so we've got on the inside of the cul-de-sac, so the water sort of all drains to the inside of the cul-de-sac for the roadway, the way the elevations go. And we've got some parallel parking that's inside and the parallel parking is going to be uh, unit pavers, so it will be uh, partially pervious um, and then you know we have details for flush granite curves so that it holds the roadway up well because this is also a narrow road we really did a, a try to keep this as a minimum for the widths of the asphalt um, and so and then this first piece up front you come down there's a little splitter island here because it goes one way around the loop and so there's a rain garden uh, right behind that which does infiltrate but it does have an overflow. It has a little yard drain overflow. And so it ties, these systems sort of tie together. 
is then some catch basin sort of at the bottom of the hill that because the cul-de-sac sort of slopes down in this, in this direction, we couldn't get this water back into the cul-de-sac. So we put some catch basins in and they tie into the uh, infiltration system underneath, which that, these are like Coltec or storm something units, like half round mm -hmm. uh, plastic units with stone all around it. And then there is an outlet from that and that outlet ties back into this detention basin to take the large storms, mm -hmm. like 25 to 100 year storms. And then there's a little piece of drainage that comes down the back that uh, we just caught over here in this corner. So we made sure we could try to infiltrate. So it's a little infiltration basin and that also has an overflow that catches in it. And then lastly, each house unit itself can take the two-year storm. So the gutters and the water from the buildings themselves will go into two individual um, Caltech units that are behind each house. And we actually did that up. We did this section of um, Village Hill can't be good the last time and those units worked out pretty well for each of the housing units because like I said it's because when the units are so tight together you gotta be a little bit careful with you don't have extra room to let things flow. Yeah. Well, what happens in the non two year storm? In the non two year storm it's piped so this actually takes a little bit more than the two year storm but then it pipes and it goes into this large detention field. So that's how you Yes. Okay, yeah. that, and then what happens with all of the individuals? Are they at all linked to that system? The individual house infiltration? They are not. So they, the larger storms flow down into the roadways. So they just flow across. They'll fill yeah. up and flow down. Yes. Yeah, we called out for erosion matting uh, and like a jute fiber to do with the plantings to hold up the, until the plantings get established. That's what I was going to ask you. I didn't see what type was. Um, so I didn't know what oh, we had a detail in that. I don't know if we put the. Uh, I hope we put the type on there, but we can provide it. I'm just looking to see what it is. Yeah. So it'll be a jute type. Yeah, we typically try to use the ones that sustainable and decomposes afterwards. The runs here, there are a few slopes, but there are no like really, really long runs, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, so we'll put the silk fabric up, uh, put the silk fence up, and then obviously grade those slopes off and put the jute in seat. Have you seen success or not as good success with a different product? Well, I wasn't sure what, because of the steepness of the slope, whether you had to go to something to the last five years before it degraded. Depending on the slope and, and how, long, how long you wanted that stuff to, to, to last. You can go with woven straw, which is going to last, what, a year maybe? Yeah. If you're lucky. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All the way up to stuff that goes 15 or 20 years. Yeah, we prefer to go a couple of seasons. I mean, it is kind of a catch-22 because, you know, we, we have pretty good success with our slopes. And one of the reasons is we get a landscape architect to work with the soil and make sure the soils are amended and they're, they can start. And then we also call for them to be planted at the right time. A lot of times, you know, people hydro seed November 15th and yeah. <laughs> have no grass establishment, <coughs> then, you know. Or they do it June 30th and then there's six weeks of drought and or six weeks of little rainfall. And so, you know, you really got to be careful when you plant it. So as long as you can catch a couple of seasons, get a good three months of establishment, whether you do it in August or, you know, April, May-ish, you know, and then let it go, you know. It really takes a season to a season and a half if it's planted in the right time you know, to get it fully established. Any other questions? So any additional comments? Uh, I was just wondering if there would be any alternate design to the riffraff overflow, if the velocity is going out for it. Allow for or vegetative, vegetative protection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
You know, and I was, I, I need to talk to David about that comment. I think you were reading one of his comments. I mean, we can take a look at it and see if we can cut it back um, a little bit on those. I think it's funny that Doug McDonald uh, originally asked us to put, we have two outflows from it to spread the water out rather than having one. So we did do that, so the velocities might be low enough. I can you know, take a look at that, obviously. We prefer to use the least amount of stone possible. It's, it is more expensive, although it's easier to dump and run, which is why sometimes people do it. Yeah, it was shallow enough on the slope that you saw. Yeah, no, it's a little, yeah, so I, I don't think, we might look at getting down the slope and then it's, I don't know, it's, it doesn't flatten out a whole lot. Yeah, no, so the first part we definitely have to do stuff. Jeremy, you recommended that we uh, include the condition to Practical, but uh, yeah, I think, naturally. I think so. Yeah, and that that was also common in, in the stormwater permit, and I believe it's a planning board the same one. Yeah. Anything else? Motion to close. And the second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So we have uh, uh, staff recommendation that uh, standard conditions plus uh, the, uh, to the extent practical that uh, minimize look at at the outflow and see if plantings or other natural materials can suffice. special conditions? Now, what was the concern about the plantings, Sarah? There, there really aren't a whole lot of plantings proposed in that area. So it seemed like something additional would make sense. And down the slope? Um, at the, the outfall. At the outfall? Okay. Either way, I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, either way, I think there should be more planting. Um, and then just investigate whether we really need that much riprap. Minimize or eliminate riprap due to the dump. So much the better. Do you need something like a plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, do we need uh, to before that stage in the construction is reached to uh, see what the determination has been and submit an updated plan for the uh, outflow? Would that? Yeah, I, I think that would address it. Anything else? Motion to close. When is this going to start? Well, assuming we get final approval, we'd have a 20-day appeal period, and the 21st day will probably start. Uh -huh. So we, we we're ready to go. We are ready to go. Um, and I'm assuming that getting to that to the outflow that we were the, the point source is going to that we were talking about, that will be at the beginning of the it, it will be because it will be part of the infrastructure improvements that are made there. So. We'll include a condition that an uh, updated plan determining whether in fact it is practical, whether the flow rates are long enough to, that it's practical to replace the riprap with uh, uh, vegetation or at least minimize. Um, and we'll see that updated plan have that few more conditions. And included in that uh, a more complete description of plantings around the uh, discharge. Even if you're going to smoke Any other conditions? I just looked at that list of plantings. I looked at it quickly before, but I really would like to see them in the news. I should be on the lookout. 
out for that before closing the hearing. Did you double check that? What's that? Most it's are. The Japanese El Kobo, which is ten of them. Right. And I don't know anything about them, but. Yeah. yeah. Sounds. That's not the same. I don't know what the ghost was. <laughs> of the most common, that is one. They're planted all over town. There's someone in yeah, El Kobo. It's, it's a good street tree, but it has it has yeah. some bad tendencies of cracking sometimes with the ice. I've seen a lot of El Kobo damage. I'd like to put in there that we recommend native trees. And in general, and in general, in general, I mean, what we're doing is we're recommending supporting native habitat. So that should be a recommendation. So the standard conditions, uh, plus a couple of specific conditions, have to do with the. Uh, Redesign of the outflow and maximizing of the natural um, indigenous plantings uh, and uh, looks like I've done standard conditions. Uh, that's a motion? Yeah, I, I uh, and a second. Second. Uh, further discussion? I just want to say I appreciate that, that so much has been moved away from the right. resource areas. I think that's nicely done. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you. So it's great to be able to see thoroughness and quality of some submissions of the level of detail and specificity to the prior applicant who drew a little magic marker on the photo and said yeah. pool here. And then, uh, Dif different scale of projects. Yeah, right. Yeah. Familiarity. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank I don't know if I'm looking at the revised or the old agenda. Revised has a CR next. Conservation district. I'm looking at the old one. So, uh, so this is approved conveyance and conservation restriction to Kestrel Trust. So uh -huh. this is a, a property that we acquired uh, last year as part of our land grant. And this, is, this is the Breitner property. It has a little sugar shack. It's on Sylvester Road. Um, it was an addition to Sawmill Hills. Oh, it's just yes. out there. Yeah. It's nice. It yeah. gets really buggy. Go out now. <laughs> it's really buggy. <laughs> it gets really buggy. Um, so the, the acquisition was already approved and it's been completed, but the commission didn't formally approve conveying a permanent conservation restriction to the uh, Trust. Uh, so the is going to hold the... Yes. So we would need a motion to, to uh, convey that to the Kestrel Trust and then sign it because it's all set to go. Um, well, I'm on, Brian, um, on Ava Circle. Uh -huh. So I can, I'm like, actually, we sort of uh, go out and sort of hike out to either Chester or Sylvester, depending on the longer hikes. But I just wonder if you'd like to make the motion. To oh, sure. Con convey. Sure. Hmm. Sounds like a good idea. Great. And a second? Yeah. All in favor? Uh, all right. Okay. So has anybody been to use the shirt yet? Uh, we're maintaining it just in case we want to use it for little workshops or storage of tools or something on the field. But we don't have a we don't have definitive plans for what to do with it. I mean, it's not it. huge, obviously. No, you know, no. it's cute. Us, it, you know, it is very cute. Is it a functioning shirt shirt? It's not. It had been fairly recently, a few years ago. I mean, it looks exteriorly, it looks like it's a relatively good. I held on to that one time. I was hiking all the way from the other end of the cell phone. I was hiking and I kind of got lost. All of a sudden, I'm not sure. So now I am. It is so funny though, because people are, um, I think the Ava Circle Trailhead is sort of more, kind of more well known, maybe. Like, at least they, like, 
of the, if you look on that sort of center there, when people get so freaked out about parking on the circle and walking on the lawn, you know, we're like, really, it's okay. <laughs> you know, versus some of these other ones, like the end of Sylvester Road or that one, it just looks more, I don't know, like it's supposed to be a trailhead versus right. walking through somebody's side yard. Any staff issue permits? Uh, I'm doing two emergency certifications at the moment. Smith had some issues with their sewer that needed to be repaired immediately, and it was within Riverfront area, so that, that seemed legitimate. Mm -hmm. uh, and on Riverbank Road, someone had a very large, very dead tree in their front yard that was just sort of spitting branches on their cars and their house every time it rained or it was windy. So they took that down. Um, and why does that come to us? To it's in Riverfront. Oh, it's in the river. Yeah. So you can't take down even a dead tree. And they thought to come. I think their, their tree like guy said that he oh, wouldn't no. do it without a permit. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, okay. And then other business. I mentioned this to Jack since Jack was very much in favor of this project. But City Council was not unanimous on the coal purchase near Brookwood Marsh, which is really unusual for a conservation acquisition. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, several councillors thought that there should be more units developed there. We are doing a limited development with maybe up to six units, uh, but a few councillors thought there should be more. So if, if anybody would like to go speak in favor of that at second reading and say that it should be preserved. But it passed first reading? It did pass, but not, not unanimously. Not so they thought there should be more housing? Yeah. Yeah. It's so much wetlands. Yeah. But the, it, as we looked at it, it was hard to see where you could, because as I recall, the, there was these little isolated places that were developable. Right? Yeah. yeah. Which is the reason why it wasn't fully developed in the first place, because it was jelly. But one of the counselors who voted against it has also since resigned. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not to mention their names. <laughs> Ryan decided to step in. Yes. Oh, isn't there another person? And somebody else, too. I've, I've, I've assumed since paper. he was first elected that Ryan's on his way to Congress. He has that book. Yeah. Uh, uh, so. And you saw on the paper that 30000 in the CPA funds? Yes. And where that, that ended yeah, up? Yeah, that's where it ended up. The best I could do. So I'm sorry, it. you guys. <laughs> the committee spent all of their money, so yeah. it was. Yeah. It was a good custom. Yeah, there's a lot of really good projects, and yeah. they just look needed. And as it was, we, you know, I had to bond the Pulaski Park uh, Phase Two. So that's right. not using totally. up anymore. What's phase, phase One? Wreckage. <laughs> it's terrible. Well, they're building things now. Well, they're, yeah. and they're, but they're taking down the, the construction fence now is starting to be open, right? Uh, well, it's not so know. ugly anymore. <laughs> There's, that? It's not quite as ugly as it was before. There, some yeah. trees have been planted. There's right. a lot of stuff going in. You can see through it. Yeah. yeah. They let you see through it. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? No. Well, I, I, it seemed to me that there was uh, not the last two meetings, but maybe three meetings ago. There, it was longer ago than that. That there was some ordinary person who had cut down a bunch of stuff all the way down in the brook, and neighbors had complained, and he basically blew us off and didn't show. You know, we, we find yes. him. Or I will. I will be. This was the ATV issue. Was the guy on Route Ten? No. No. I think was this the one on. Um, Oh, down by the Mill River. The uh, yeah, they started clearing. Uh, uh, Hinkley Street. Yeah. Out I'm imagining, yeah, I think. No, it wasn't that one. Um, but anyway, somebody, we, we wrote threatening letters, I, I, and we're about to assess a fine if he didn't. And I can't, I just realized I couldn't remember what had ever happened to that. That sounds like a Route 10 guy. Huh? That sounds like a Route 10 guy. No, he's got something on it. It's just blatant and he cleared yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, Streperous citizens, and I, um, I couldn't recall when it ever happened. So, uh, I mean, there was a guy on um, back in Leeds. Leeds. 
right by the river. Yeah, that's the one. I've been to the church down there, and I, that was a while ago, and I thought he didn't know that he wasn't allowed to. Like, yeah. I think it was, I like, guess remember his neighbor was like taking pictures when he wasn't looking or something. That was, that was like last year. Yeah, yeah no, was, a, there was one guy who basically blew us off. Not just. Was that the, the, I think that was Did we ever Zerani. find anybody? Or well, we tried to find him, but he wouldn't sign for the certified letter with that the fine came in. So DEP said, well, I'll tell you what, if he ever comes in for a permit for anything, we, we will not permit. give him a file letter right. under any circumstances right. until he addresses it. That sounds like it. I remember there was a threat, and then we were going to uh, send a letter about a fine, and then uh, I never heard anything. So. I, I suspect that parcel is undevelopable and will be purchased by Mass Audubon at some point in any case. Okay. Um, so, uh, is it too early to begin talking about summer schedule? Uh, no, not if people know when they're going to be around. I don't know when the planning board is meeting. We generally try to coordinate them, but that we don't absolutely have to. Because we usually drop back to one a month for July and August? Yes. And uh, uh, they don't know their schedules now. Does it look like there will be things coming in? Hard to say. I don't know at this point. June 9th, we don't have a meeting uh, because we don't have this room again. And it's I could have squeezed a couple things onto that agenda, but it, it's a pain to go to the police station. So, so we'll, we'll just skip that meeting. Skip. So we have. One in two weeks, and then another one until four weeks after that? Yes. About four weeks. I'll be gone for a number of weeks in August. Um, I'll be traveling to the uh, World Yo-Yo Contest. With what? The World Yo-Yo Contest. Yo-Yo. Yo -yo. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the rap thing. I want to get Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the meeting that's in Cleveland? Yes. <laughs> if there's anything left after the yeah. Republican That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> if Cleveland doesn't burn down. Yeah. Or Cleveland, they always seem to get the short end of the stick. Yeah. Uh, I mean, right, I well, we don't have to decide yet. I, mean, I know I'm away for a week or 10 days in August as well, but. Um, Early or? Um, August late? 4th. Fourth through the fourteenth. So I, if there were if there was a meeting on August eleventh, I would yeah. not be here. Yeah. I'd, I'll be gone that early part of August and so on. Definitely not the eleventh. Okay. Right. Um, and so we'll, we'll narrow it down. Uh, in a, uh, probably in a couple of weeks. Um, rather than week but there are things in two weeks, and then you have things for the second or the yeah. fourth. Yeah. The fourth group. Then can we not redo that whole space? Yeah, I was going to say. We can recycle it. Oh, you guys got the good ones. Some of them were right. small. I, and I mailed them too that were small. Right. And I handed out the ones that were small. We got, because we were at the police station last time, they said we got the police Downey used to 